right, Nick, let's talk about the Detroit Lions. This is a team coming into this year. I think they were just at the precipice of getting to the Super Bowl. They just need a little bit of extra boost. They could have got there, and I think this coming season, they have that fire under them, and I think they've made some great changes this offseason just to give them that little extra edge, maybe against some conference opponents that will help them get back to the big game next year. Let's get into the article and talk about one of these moves in particular, and then we'll talk about it on the other side. This is from Acme Packing Company. It says, on Wednesday, the Detroit Lions announced that they hired Deshae Townsend as their passing game coordinator and defensive backs coach, Terrell Williams as their defensive line coach and run game coordinator, and Jim O'Neill as a defensive assistant. That final move in particular is interesting considering what else is going on in the NFC North. Both O'Neill and Green Bay Packers defensive coordinator Jeff Halfley coached at University of Albany early on in their careers. O'Neill is an assistant offensive line coach and tight end coach in 01, and Halfley as a defensive assistant from 02 to 05. They never officially crossed paths until 2014, though, when O'Neill was named the defensive coordinator of the Cleveland Browns. The first defensive back coach that O'Neill hired in Cleveland was Halfley, who had just come off his first season as a full time on field NFL coach with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So clearly, these guys have a relationship, they have knowledge of each other. Nick, I want you to let us know what your thoughts are on what this exactly means for the Lions. But, Lions fans, let us know in the comment section below. Free agency coming up. I think there's a lot of potential for some big moves to be made. Let us know, what are you thinking? GM, everybody out the window, salary cap out the window. Let us know, who are you eyeing in free agency for the Lions in the comment section below. But Nick, what are your thoughts on this latest move? Can you explain what this exactly means for the Lions? I think it's a little bit of gamesmanship by the Detroit Lions because it's important to understand O'Neill was not hired to a significant position, obviously just a defensive assistant, kind of a senior consultant kind of level. And look, O'Neill in his own right is a very experienced coach. I'm sure he can add a lot of value to the Detroit Lions, but you especially consider the fact that he knows Lafley. And it's important to understand as a coach, you generally are who you are strategically and tactically very early on in your career. No one goes through massive changes in terms of how they view the game of football once they get established. Once they get to the NFL, you kind of are who you are scheme-wise. If you look at, for example, Sean McVay, when he was a tight ends coach, he was the same kind of guy strategically as he is now with the Rams head coach, right? Mike McDaniel, when he was going doing run game coordinating with the San Francisco 49ers, very similar to what he is now with the Miami Dolphins. And I think that's important to understand because obviously anyone who follows the Green Bay Packers knows that they hated Joe Barry as her defensive coordinator. A lot of Packers fans, and not wrongly, thought that Joe Barry limited the upside of the Green Bay Packers, and they went out and brought in Lafley from the college ranks, who, let's be honest, there's not a lot of coaches in terms of the NFL that have a lot of film on how Lafley prepares, how he builds his teams, his strategies, his focus. But there is one guy who does know, and that's O'Neal. And I think that gives the Lions a little bit of an edge against the, uh, the Green Bay Packers. And look, I know the Lions... 12 wins during the regular season. You have the Green Bay Packers, who had nine wins. You, you beat the Packers once. You lost a really close game. I think turnovers really hurt you against them on Thanksgiving. But the reality is the Green Bay Packers, they're young. Jordan Love is the real deal. LaFleur is still a really good coach. The Green Bay Packers are on the way up. The Detroit Lions are on top right now, but there's a lot of pressure from Green Bay coming up the rear. And one of the ways you can help cut that off a little bit is to try and find any strategic advantage that you can to eliminate any opposition. Because the real threat for Detroit, they're in the middle of a Super Bowl run now, is that if they get just they don't get a home playoff game, they get superseded, they get caught up in a brutal division fight. And so instead of having, you know, resting guys getting ready for the playoffs late in the year, they're trying to stave off the Green Bay Packers just to win the division, something like that. You never want to be in those situations that'll wear you down as the season progresses. I think one of the true secrets of the Kansas City Chiefs and before that New England Patriots dynasties is they didn't have a lot of division competition. They basically got to chill out the last week of every single regular season because their divisions usually stunk. The Detroit Lions, you want to make sure you follow that same path. You want to make sure you, you do whatever you can to keep the Packers down. And you've got, and the Packers have a new defensive coordinator. Not a lot of NFL coaches have a lot of film on him. Not a lot of NFL defensive coaches know how to really expect what the, he's going to bring to the Green Bay Packers except for one guy, and he's now a senior assistant on Detroit Lions. I think this is one of those gamesmanship, really smart moves. Again, is it an earth-shattering deal? Is it going to be one of those things that turns the Lions from what they were last season to guaranteed Super Bowl champions? 
Obviously not. But in one or two critical games, these division games, down the stretch, do they get one of these wins against the Green Bay Packers they may have otherwise lost? And, and because of that, they get a home playoff game, they get number one seed, whatever it may be, and then that propels them to a Super Bowl run? I think there's a distinct possibility of that. This is one of those under-the-radar moves that I don't think gets noticed, but I think it really could have a big impact come regular season time. Yeah, and it also helps. He also coached under Rich Bisaccia as well, another Green Bay coach on the staff, so that gives them that extra bonus as well. But I like what you talked about, about that little extra edge against the Packers. And you look since 2020, they're 4-4 four and four against the Packers since 2020, right there. So if they just get a little bit of extra edge, they start, instead of splitting, they start winning outright against the Packers. That helps their playoff standing. And you look, you know, NFC North, it's historically a tough division. But last season, it was a magical run for the Lions. But let's get real here. This is why you need that edge. The Packers are young. They're building. So that gives you the edge against the Packers. The Vikings, Cousins got hurt halfway through the season. So that really took them out of the race of any potential of winning the division. The Bears are the Bears. You go next season, again, we don't know where Cousins is going to be. He's either going to be coming off of a major injury or not with the Vikings anymore. You look at the Bears, they're probably still rebuilding. So they're not the threat. The Packers are the team you really need to watch out for. So I think any little advantage, like I said, 4-4 four four since 2020 against the Packers, any little advantage to help you start sweeping instead of splitting with the Packers is going to make huge, huge uh, leaps and bounds as far as ensuring you win the division, but also giving you higher ranking in that postseason. You know, maybe get yourself out of the wild card round, maybe get yourself further on down the line. So I think this is a really smart move by the Lions. I think it's going to help them out in the future. Well, and it's really important to understand that the Lions, we talk about them all the time, how close they were to beating San Francisco. Green Bay had San Francisco beat just as well. So the Packers, again, record-wise, a lot of people thought, oh, you know, 9-8, and eight, they snuck in. We saw what they did to Dallas. They obliterated Dallas. They should have beaten San Francisco, just like Detroit should have beaten San Francisco. This Packers team, they are only going to be better in 2024. And I guarantee you, Dan Campbell, and I guarantee you, Brad Holmes, look at looks at the Packers and like, this is a real threat. This is probably our biggest threat to making a return to the Super Bowl because if we have to play tough late regular season games and potentially lose the division, have to go on the road in the playoffs, it's a long slog to the Super Bowl. We have got to cut this head off as soon as we can. And again, I think this is just one of those moves, bringing in a guy that knows what he's going to get out of this news Bears defensive coordinator and spreading that to Ben Johnson, spreading that to Dan Campbell and saying, here's what he's taught. Here's what he knows. Here's how we can beat it. It's just those little advantages, right? It doesn't look like much, but it will really, really matter, especially when you look back in January of 2025, 11 months from now. And when you look at where the Lions end up in the postseason, you can sit there and say, yeah, some of those big wins against the Packers that were really big come seeding, they were due to the fact the Lions offense was able to really break down that Packers defense. And all of that can be traced back to this honor.